day you won't find me it's like the more money we come across the more problems we see day you won't find me it's like the more money we come across the more problems we see i'm coming out that's right that's what they want you to do diddy they want you to come on out baby come on out honey i'm Come on, come on out, Diddy. This is what the people have been waiting for, okay? Diddy said, I don't know what they want from me. It's like the more money we come across, the more problems we see. You ain't never lied about that. You ain't never lied about that, honey. What is going on, everybody? We are here, all right? Just to chit chat. Got a few things we're going to talk about before we get into this Diddy lawsuit. Whew. And the amendments, child. I feel like this is going to be a long one. And y'all know I be here for a good time, not a long time. And then I always overstay my damn welcome. <laughs> but we are going to try to get through this as swiftly as we can. Okay? Make sure that you guys are coming in. You know what? I have to make sure that I um, share the video, okay? I always hop on and then I, I, I realize at the last minute that, oh, I need to share this. All right, so give me one second. Y'all make sure y'all like up the video while I get my life together over here on my end. Girl, it's been so much going on with this lawsuit. Girl. We're coming in, you know what? It has been insane. Okay, Young Miami, they is on your ass, girl. It's just not... You know what? I need y'all to tell me if y'all feel like, and we're going to we're gonna get into Diddy last because I feel like it's so much. But while it's on my mind, y'all let me know if y'all feel like, you know, Miami is a victim in this or would y'all say that she um, was complicit? You know what I'm saying? Like she went along. Like y'all let me know if she's a victim or she not a victim to y'all. So, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Because I do feel like a lot of people that Diddy has come across have been victims. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, some part of me feel like she ain't. You feel what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't work jobs. Bitch, I am a job. Ain't that what she said? <laughs> Oh, my God. It's hard when your persona is about tricking on this. Ooh. Um, but, girl, I am not here to judge. I am just here to discuss what is going on and what the people have to say. It's not my place to judge you. Okay? That's not what I'm here to do. Um, so, there's that. But let's um, get into real quick. The first thing I want to talk about. All right. Um, real quick, like I do want to get into um, I think this is it right here. I want to get into Wendy Elcefo of Real Housewives of Potomac. So y'all know Teddy Millencamp. I think that's how you say her last name. I believe she was on Real Housewives of Orange, Orange County. Yeah, when I watched it, I don't think Tandy was on the show at the time. I don't think she was. But anyway, she has this podcast, Two Peas in a Pod, all right, with Tamara. I feel like Tamara may have been on there. But either way, all right, of course, they're giving their commentary like a lot of other people do um, when it comes to these housewife shows. And she had, they both had some things to say. It seems like they want Wendy Osefo fired okay from the show so I do want to get into just a piece of what these ladies had to say and Miss Wendy definitely came back and clapped to the clap back and then Teddy said girl you're not gonna get the last word because I don't know who you think you're messing with okay girl because I am Teddy and I get the last word so then Teddy swung back around and she got it all right but let's go ahead and check it out real quick let me know that y'all can hear this too I hope the audio is working what's gonna happen with Wendy I need her to be paused yeah. You need her to be paused. I, I, I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board or just with Wendy. Gone. Like, by paused, I mean, bye. Mm -mm. bye. 
Bye. Yeah, nice knowing you. I'll see you later. Uh, What's going to happen all. with Wendy? I need her to be paused. Yeah. I, I, I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board or just with Wendy. Gone. Like, by paused, I mean, bye. 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 Nice knowing you. I'll see you. Whew. All right. So y'all just heard what Teddy had to say when it came down to Dr. Wendy. So Dr. Wendy had swung around and Dr. Wendy said, oh, <laughs> okay, then Teddy, bitch. No, I got it. No, no, no. I see what's going on here. Okay. You just wanted to get my attention. Hi, Karen, baby. Now, see, I ain't even see the hashtag. Hi, Karen. It has me screaming. So this is what Wendy posted was the DM. One thing about Dr. Wendy, baby, we thought quad was terrible at responding. It's Dr. Wendy. Because remember how, um, not Lebe Iwu. Was it Lebe Iwu? No, I think it was Lebe Iwu. The, the, the good friend um, to Ineka and, and to Wendy, uh, or at least Wendy's sister, wasn't Lebe Iwu. And let me know if I said it wrong now, if it's not Lebe, the one that was reaching out to Wendy trying to find out her doctor's information so she can go get her surgical procedures and stuff done. You know, I feel like Dr. Wendy was kind of like slow to respond to her as well. So this is a message um, from basically October 2022. I'm sorry, 2022 was when Teddy put up a story. She mentioned Wendy and the story is clear. Wendy didn't respond. March 1st of 2023, she says, Dr. Wendy, hope you're well. Your reunion performance should definitely be caught in Housewives 101. Would you be able to come on two teas in a pod with me and Tamara next Tuesday, March 7th? We'd love to chat with you, okay? Um, Wendy did not respond. At least I didn't see that. Unless she called the lady or something, Wendy didn't respond. Miss Ma'am hit her up November 3rd. She says, just bumped into your husband walking down the hall. Come on the pod today. We have a suite we are podcasting from at Four Seasons. Baby, I feel like this is Wendy saying that she don't fuck with your kind. She does not rock with you like that, Miss Ma'am. And Wendy definitely released the messages. So while you sit over here trying to talk about how you want me gone and you need me out of there and all this other B I T, all this other shit, you damn sure was praising me the season before. You damn sure been trying to get me on your podcast on more than one occasion. So it must be something about me that you like while you trying to come over here and fake in front on your little podcast and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So Wendy done called her out and done clocked the hell out of her. So then Teddy came back and said, got what? What you got? Okay, well, you talking about you got it. Got what, girl? Okay, that I wanted you on our podcast before watching this season? Because that must be what you got. Notice that's when the DMs stopped. You would think with four degrees, you would come up with something more original than Karen. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> girl, not Teddy pulled a seat up to the table. Teddy done pulled a seat up to the table. <laughs> Now, I didn't say that you ate. I just said you pulled the seat up to the table, girl, meaning you was ready to get into some things. But I didn't say that you ate Miss Wendy up. You just pulled the seat up to the table. All right? Because you ain't have to come for her like that time of time. You would think with four degrees you would come up with something more original than Karen. Baby, listen. While you over there talking about before you watch the season, it's giving um, November 3rd was pretty recent so you definitely was watching the season and still wanted this lady on your show and this lady has yet to respond to you so you give me a little bit of jason lee when he probably not all the time but at times when he could not get a person on the show to interview with him he'll start throwing them shade and that is what is giving that you did you feel in a way that dr wendy would not come on to you guys podcast Okay, and so you feeling away, so you decided to throw some shade, and now you want to say that you want the lady up off the show. Okay, that's what it's giving. But um, while you over there trying to clock, she done already click, clack, and clocked you, if you ask me. Okay, once she released the messages, because it was giving you was a hound dog. Hello? Hello? And if she wouldn't have said anything, and you want, if she wouldn't have re responded to what you had to say about her not being on the show, you would have allowed this reunion to come and go and still would have reached out to that woman to try and get her on your podcast. Let's not and say that we did. Hello? All right? But Miss Wendy was ready for you. 
And I hope that she don't even respond as, you know, this message was, you know, this tweet was sent out earlier this afternoon and Wendy hasn't said anything. Girl, I, she ain't even worked. I wouldn't even respond to the lady, girl. Like, you ain't even talking about shit for real. Okay, girl, I would not come off my cherry out to throw tomatoes with you, sweetheart. Period. With me and my four motherfucking degrees, girl. And because I have four degrees, I can't even hold that much of a conversation with your ass, bitch. Okay? Whew. But anyway, girl, hopefully y'all work that out, honey. Good luck. Let's go ahead and let's keep uh, going because I want to talk about Miss Portia Williams, all right? Because earlier today, I did see where Radar Online ended up reporting that um, Portia's reasoning for stepping away from her marriage was because of the whole um, immigration situation, right? Now I done learned some other tea. And I said, girl, I didn't even know that was going on. So we're going to get into these two articles. But let me tell y'all something. Portia full of shit. Like it or not, Portia is full of the BS. Your spokesperson told us last month that it had nothing to do with, like, y'all getting this divorce had nothing to do with his immigration. It was an ongoing issue. And let me tell you what I think some of that ongoing issue is. Girl, issue communicating from the, with the NIGGA from your past is what it's given. Now, I could be wrong, honey. But, um... Girl, yeah, you probably still been in communication with some folks. That's why that man sat up there and said, make sure she don't delete them messages from Mr. Kelvin, whoever him is. Okay, so y'all been out here doing something else, and you trying to make it seem like it's about the immigration stuff. Girl, please. Girl, please. I feel like you already knew about all of that, all of that stuff, and that man wasn't legal. I feel like you knew all about that. Sit up here trying to play now. Okay, girl. Talk about his criminal history and everything. Girl, let's get into this. Because it's Porsche over here on some other stuff. Honey. All right. So they're saying Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams admits ex Simon Guabadia's questionable immigration and alleged criminal history led to the divorce. And she releases private text messages as evidence. Girl, y'all is getting real fucking muddy. Portia, I hope you get a nice check for this. Because y'all getting real muddy. All right, they said that Portia said she started to question everything after recent reports about her estranged husband, Simon, alleged criminal history and questionable immigration came out and it led to her filing for the divorce. They're saying that she asked the judge to uh, shut down Simon's plea for exclusive access to their Georgia mansion and reveal new details of their split. OK, because y'all know he didn't sat up there and locked her inside their house and took his ass all the way to another country. Girl, I'm screaming. I thought that was the funny shit. The lock this lady out this damn house. So Portia wants the a prenup enforced because the prenup says that um I believe after 30 days, like she gets to stay in the house, period. After 30 days, he's supposed to leave or something like that. Um, according to the prenup, she could stay there um as long as she wants or until they sell the home or whatever the case is, but he's the one that's supposed to exit the premises. And that's not the case. And now he's ask, asking for an extension and her, I believe, um the the I think the extension ended up being denied or something like that. And he's now gotten a new attorney and that new attorney is like, y'all could do whatever it is y'all want to do. But my client is doing exactly what we planned, which was for his ass to stay right where he at. And that's in that house. OK, so this is going to be a whole mess as it has been one. All right. They said Portia argued the prenup they signed before the wedding stated Simon would vacate the marital premises. Um within 30 days all right um simon claimed in response to this that portia brought uh two armed men now first simon i could have sworn it was just one she brought one armed man now you saying that it was two armed men that came to the house and he said that he was forced to call the police to maintain the peace she accused him of changing them locks and attempting to block her from the house because he he uh i think he changed the access code to the gate y'all then when she got past the gate, because I guess he figured she was smarter than that, she got past the gate. Then he turned around and changed the lock so she couldn't get in the house and then changed the uh, code to the garage, baby. When I tell you they've been having it out over there at the Guabadia household, crazy, 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 crazy. Um, They're saying Portia objected to Simon having exclusive access to the home and said that um, the reality star then dropped several bombshells about her uh, split. Despite sources previously claiming Portia did not leave Simon due to the reports he was potentially facing deportation, in the new filing, she admits that it played a big role. I 
don't know if I believe that. It played that much of a big role, Portia. I thought you was happy to be the queen and the princess over there in his kingdom or whatever he got over there in Africa. You don't want to be over there for life? You don't want to be over there for life, Miss Portia? You don't want to get deported with him? Girl, I thought it was for better or for worse. I guess not, honey. Let's keep going. Is there more? Okay, by way of further response, the media frenzy that ensued was solely a result of her husband's actions, which included revelations about um, Simon's criminal history, questionable immigration, and allegations of fraud, okay? Um, wife shows, Portia shows that the news reports of her husband alleged immigration fraud and what appeared to be an imminent threat of deportation were shocking and affected her mental and emotional well-being. None of this information was ever disclosed by Simon to Portia, despite Portia having previously inquired about his immigration status and criminal history. I don't know if Portia actually inquired about that. So I don't even, I don't think Portia asked about none of that. I don't think she gave a damn. You ain't giving no damn about him being all the way out his damn marriage. So I don't know. I, I don't believe that you care that much about him being a 100% citizen of the United States. I'm just telling you what I think. Okay, so I, you ain't care nothing about him being a lady husband, so I know you ain't give a damn about no citizenship. Hello, girl, you, she ain't care nothing about no marital status, so why she care about a citizenship? You know what I'm saying, girl? <laughs> no, ma'am. All right, Portia says she wrote Simon a text message that read, there are more than one or two reasons we are in this place, and I am forced to make this decision. I will make sure they are written and listed for you to see. There is nothing in this world that would have told me I would have to divorce you or that I would even contemplate leaving you even for a day. However, what is between us rocks our foundation to the core. Y'all Atlanta folks kill me. I blame you, Mimi Faust. You hurt me to the core. Girl, y'all killing me with the to, to the core, girl. Let it go to the core. That lady was hurt to the core, too, when Simon was over there zipping and zoning it over there going places with you. So she had to slide over there and see what the assistant was over there talking about and all this other stuff. Then next thing you know, y'all done sat up there and got engaged in that lady's face. And then you came to America and played in our face with family. What is it? Portia Family Matters. Okay, and that's the other game, too. Why you talking about your family matter? It didn't seem like they matter to me. Just like him being a lady husband didn't matter. Just like this citizenship did not matter. Period. It did not matter. I don't care what nobody talking about. It did not matter. Um, what else? She added, I have always trusted you from day one. Girl, where is Aunt Bertha when you need her? Aunt <laughs> It was a scheme. What do you mean you trusted this man from day one when this was somebody? <laughs> what is going on? This is somebody else's man. At least he was. And you trusted him from day one? Ooh, Portia, you'll be disappointing me so much, girl. I have always trusted you from day one when I took your hand and started on this journey. I've always stressed to you that I feel safe with you and how important for someone like me that is. I've also loved you through and through, but all of this shows me you have not cared for me the same, and that is a huge problem. Your job is to protect, protect PJ and I, and you have not. He damn sure then, girl, because let me tell you, he locked you and PJ out. Girl, it wasn't just you. PJ got locked out, too. And I'm over here like, well, what did PJ do? PJ can't even get in through the garage? Why would you do that to PJ? So I'm with you on that, girl. He did not protect neither one of y'all, honey. All right. Her lawyer wrote, since learning of Simon's checkered immigration history and status, Portia began to question everything that she initially believed to be true as it relates to her husband's character, his immigration, the business dealings, etc., and began to uncover additional information that Simon failed to disclose to her. Oh, wow. Mm -mm. Petitioner did not wish to remain married to a stranger. And filed for a divorce. Girl, he was a stranger when you took his hand in marriage. 
and then try to convince us that y'all had only been kicking it for two weeks because you ain't want to seem like a home wrecker. But, girl, it really came out better that you had been a home wrecker and had been messing with the man for a few months and then turned around and got engaged and set up there and make us say that y'all just click like that after two weeks, girl. Oh, y'all is a mess. Oh, child. Let me get to the other piece, right? Because this was the other piece to it. Real Housewives of Potomac star Portia Williams accuses Simon of hosting at least three women in their Georgia mansion on different evenings as divorce turns ugly. Girl, that need to be a soap opera as divorce turns. Y'all know how they had to show what as the world turns? No, as divorce turns. Because we is tossing and turning every damn week with some new tea about Portia and Simon. Let's keep going. All right. Portia accused him of having a nighttime rendezvous with plenty of women inside of their marital home. Oh, wow. The shocking allegations were revealed in court documents. Portia filed in the bitter di divorce battle after Simon claimed that she that she brought two gun-toting men to the home and he was forced to call the police. Oh, my. <laughs> In a searing response, they're saying Portia accused her ex of trying to impunge her reputation when he called the police to their home. Mm -hmm. They're saying that Portia also admitted that she was afraid of his behavior and of a potential encounter with one of the women he has over at the pad. So you was afraid of him, his behavior, and, um, you know, bumping into one of the ladies? That is disrespectful. That's disrespectful. You got them ladies up in their house like that. But you couldn't be too afraid to bump into them because he changed them damn locks on you. Okay? <laughs> That's what happened. Them locks was changed on you so he could make sure you didn't bump into them. Now, see, he changed the access code to the gate, but you made sure that you got up in that gate anyway. So he was trying to make sure that you ain't bumping to nobody. Woo, they're saying that Portia has returned to the residence on various occasions to retrieve various uh, personal items, okay, belonging to her and her child, as well as to secure various items after learning that Simon had at least three women in the marital residence on different evenings, okay? So Portia been over there watching you, baby, like Simon, not Simon, but like Ralph be over there watching Drew from the cameras when he's out of town. Okay, um, so that's what Portia, she was over there still checking them cameras. I bet you ain't changed the code to them cameras, though, now, huh? That's how she saw them different lady coming up in there. So Simon has called law enforcement for a new uh, legitimate reason other than to push a false narrative that he hopes will garner him public attention at the cost of his wife's reputation. Oh, my. They're saying that, um, I, see, this got me thinking, like, Portia, you're going to try and sue him for some type of defamation? defamation or anything i'm just wondering but anywho um they're saying that portia returned to the home on march 7th she brought her personal security of her own safe for her own safety in light of you know simon's erratic behavior including hosting multiple strangers who were unknown to her all right so that she brought the people i was wondering if it, if the people she brought were security i don't know they could have been i don't know um, but yeah, uh, Portia said the entire encounter was ca was caught on home surveillance footage. She accused Simon of playing fast and loose with the truth when he claimed the interaction with the armed men was hostile. Okay. Girl, by way of further response, the parties have always had a personal security as such. It is unclear why Simon is attempting to push a false narrative that even minimally suggests that Portia returned to the marital residence with any other intentions. OK. So uh, that's pretty much everything that's going on with Portia. Portia said he had some ladies all up in the house, honey. He out here lying on her, trying to damage her reputation and she. Okay. Um, what's up, Jamie? She says so Portia sent that text after or before she slapped him with the divorce papers. Ooh. Maybe that text happened so it looks good for TV. Mm -hmm. Could be. I don't know. They ain't say when she sent that text. But it sounded like it was a text that went before she filed for that divorce. Because I believe she mentioned in the text messages that she was forced to do this. I'm forced to sit up here and divorce you because you weren't being honest. Girl, this right here is a mess. Okay? So that's what's going on with Miss Portia now, honey. All right? He had women's and stuff all up in that lady house. 
And she done brought gunmen over there to his, honey. This has been a girl, these folks here. We're gonna be hearing something else before the week is out between Portia and Simon. Some part of me feel like they enjoying the publicity that the people have been giving them. But you know, that's just what I say. All right. Now I do want to move on. And make sure you guys are coming in and you are liking up the video. I do want to move on. And I want to get into this Diddy thing, girl. And this is the part for me. Diddy about got me stressed out because when I tell y'all it's so much going on, it is, I want to get into some parts of the lawsuit. I'm going to be skimming the, um, the lawsuit because I know things were amended and, you know, people were added to the lawsuit. Somebody was taken away from the lawsuit. I believe it was. Let me see who was taken away from the lawsuit. Because I don't see their name on here anymore. I believe it's Ethiopia. Ethiopia, her name is removed. I think that Ethiopia said that she would, you know, give them whatever information that they needed when it comes to this man. Which is probably why it was amended and they took her name off of it. Like, don't sue me, boo. Okay, because I know where some of the bones and stuff is buried. So we can go and dig that up if y'all want to. Just take me with y'all. Don't be trying to sue me is what it's given. But it looks like um, Cuba Gooding Jr. was added in her place. I am slick screaming. Um, That is a bit funny because he should have been on there to begin with based on the video of him having his hand in between somebody's legs. He should have been on there first. I don't know why he wasn't. Maybe they meant to put him on there and they forgot. But that's what it is. But before we get into that, y'all, let's real quick hop over here to um, the neighborhood talk. Okay? Because Tyrese decided he wanted to step out to the front and say something. He says, um, they say Tyrese offers his support to Diddy. He says, what I can't do and what I won't do is downplay the laughter, the fun, the energy, the inspiration, the award shows, the studio sessions, the most legendary parties and events I've ever attended in my life. And I also can't act as if my high school backyard parties throughout South Central L.A. wasn't the craziest parties ever because of the bad boy on slew of hit records. I don't condone nor do I support abuse bullying sa or anything that is currently being alleged but what i can't do is turn the blinds on how what i can't do is turn the blinds on how much this means to me and all of us and what he has done for the community of music and culture don't worry i'm the only one crazy enough to jump out there and say what most of you won't say but you don't have the balls to do so because it's very normal for people to be going through a rough patch and we all stick back and make a mockery of it but i'm not gonna do that i'm praying for diddy his kids his family his mother and all the alleged victims that's in the middle of trying to simply have their voices to be heard i love this brother he's been nothing but kind and generous towards me and that's the way i feel praying and praying for more of a better outcome of all of this um happening he says god bless you diddy if you ever need to call me and just need a listening ear i'm right here bro y'all can't hear me somebody said they can't hear me hopefully y'all can hear me Whew. one thing tyrese gonna do is is <laughs> One thing Tyrese going to do is die on their heel. Uh, Tyrese going to stand. Tyrese going to be the only one on the mountain yelling. Period. It does not matter the weather. Um, I feel like this is on brand for him. Um, if, if you want to. I will say this though. Um, I appreciate Tyrese for um, showing us his card now. Let us see you. Because it is a lot of people behind the scenes that are actually supporting the hell out of him. I'm sure they're just not saying anything because they don't want to get drugged. Right. Um, but I guess at this point, what the hell more can Tyrese really lose? I mean, what more do you want from me? Because when he did that, we drugged the hell out of him. So I guess he feel like he could withstand whatever so he can say whatever. If that's what you want to do. Cool, brother. 
brother i love you brother but i also feel like while you over here trying to rush to the front to defend diddy so much where was diddy at when you was going through your legal stuff you was calling all these folks Somebody about come down to the courtroom hey y'all y'all need to support black men child support da 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 come to this courtroom b show up for me be there for me did diddy come baby was he in the front row did he tell so-and-so to tell so-and-so and then the other connect to help you out? Why are you sticking your neck that far out for the people to chop your damn head off? I'm so confused. Why? I, I mean, girl, at this point, you really could have just kept this to your damn self. Like, I know, Tyrese, this is on brand for you to come out and to say this, but I just feel like you could have kept it to yourself. Because I cannot recall a time that Diddy really stuck his out for you. While you over here praising the parties and all this other stuff that was going on. And I had an amazing time in the hit records and all of that. And I'm praying and this and that. Keep it. Keep it. It's okay to not even say. You don't have to speak ill of him if you don't want to. And that's not how you feel genuinely. But some part of me feel like you could have kept this to yourself. But I guess you needed to let him know how much you support him. But why you just ain't shoot him that text? Since you felt that way. Why you ain't give him no call? Did the number change? Which also lets me know if that's the case, you ain't have access to him like that. Or did you not text him because you ain't really trying to get tied up in the shit that he got going on? And if they see that text or that number come through, they're going to be in your line trying to see what you know. Try and pull up, tr and try and pull up some shit on you. Is that why? Because this was a text message. You could have just told him how much you love and supported him. You didn't have to let us know. Do your thing. You know? It is what it is. Um, I don't know if everybody is telling the truth about Diddy. Right. I will say that when Cassie dropped her tea, it was believable for me. When Lil Rod dropped some of his, I'm not going to lie. Some of it was like, eh, like the, 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 the little photo of supposedly Stevie J. And stuff. I'm like, OK, some of this stuff may be conflated, but I'm with you, though. You know what I'm saying? So with all of that being said, I do feel like what's happening to him is something he brought on himself. OK, this is his doing so that's on him okay but if you want to send love to this brother and you love him so much and they say you could you could hit him up and, and text i guess you thought you coming out giving your positive play was going to get more people to say positive things i'm not I, i'm not sure what you wanted but i guess you just wanted to express yourself so congratulations honey um let me see what else you had to say like there's so much shit coming across our timelines that we just don't care anymore. We don't care. So I don't want anyone to confuse me for, I mean, last night before I went to sleep, I was praying. I found myself praying for Diddy's kids. I was thinking about Justin and Christian Combs. And I'm glad somebody was thinking about them. Go to school with my daughter. <laughs> Um, they, my daughter and his twins have been at pretty much every birthday party. And then I'm just thinking to myself, see, a lot of people will go after Diddy, beat him down for whatever he's either did or being accused of, uh, allegedly. Uh, and, and then it's all about him. Right. And I was thinking about the family. I was thinking about the kids. I was thinking about now it seems like there's so the stress of yesterday i went home and all of a sudden i'm in handcuffs at the house it's 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 just trying my best to see things through the lens of the kids not just him specifically and then mm -hmm. i wanted him to know irregardless of what he's being accused of and going through well, you could as minister him. lewis farrakhan said when a man is down don't laugh at him don't make a mockery of him don't beat him down. Don't beat him down with your words. You don't have to agree with what somebody did. You don't have to even want to be associated with what somebody did. But everybody deserves prayer. The stress of. So y'all just heard what Tyrese had to say. Okay, girl, I ain't got nothing for Tyrese. All right. Um, I feel like 
I don't think the people that are discussing this are making a mockery of this. His alleged victims came out, told his tea, and the folks are discussing it. Again, I feel like this, these are things that Diddy brought upon himself at the end of the day. Okay? Now, let me see who else had something to say. I think it was, uh, what's his name? Joe Budden? Possible deniability with Homeland at your house. You, you did something. And with your private you jet? Did, it's, <laughs> dog, it's over for that best case scenario shit you're talking about. There is nothing to say that Puff is on the run, nor has he been charged with anything. So Correct. we want to be very clear in that. True. But... We niggas. So, and we from where we from. Mm -hmm. So, we look at this through that, through that lens. And this looks, this is, this is a wrap. Yeah. Oh, Joe, I haven't heard you say anything, my love. I haven't heard you say anything about this. I will say it's very um, interesting considering the fact that Diddy just sold all of the shares to Revolt on yesterday. And I, for me, you may have talked about it and I just haven't heard you. Okay. But now you got something to say. Now you're admitting that if Homeland Security is at your house, you done did some shit and it's really that serious. And now you're saying that it's over. I bet it is, honey. That's interesting. And that's interesting, but uh, good luck. Let's keep going because Akbar, Akbar has some sh to say because she always got something to say, honey. She says, I don't know what Diddy did or what he didn't do, but what I find more disturbing is how the black community is the only community in his throat, not sparing his kids or nothing. Nobody is even trying to spare his effing daughters on this internet, and that's the effed up part. Them are babies. Y'all know I want to. <sighs> it's times like this where I want you to focus on your babies. Often times like this. Once again, I don't want, I don't know what is true or not, but this has always proved my point when I say the only skin color that will publicly go against each other is the black people. We don't stick together at all. Well, girl, what the hell you think they're doing over there on Quiet on the Set? Because just the last week, it, the set was really loud because the white folks was calling out the other white folks over there. So I'm just trying to find out just a little bit. Now, girl, I hear what you're trying to say. But um, they was just dragging last week. And then they ain't done dragging because they got another episode they're going to drop on next week. Hello? But we're going to let you sit at the table because you done came to the table. Now, we ain't say you ate, but we just saying you at the table. So let's, let's keep going. Um... She says, uh, now, I'm not saying stick together with BS, but them kids are innocent, and y'all get a thrill off laughing and joking about other people's pain. But what I find even more disturbing is you never catch them Caucasians going against each other on the Internet. Girl, they was chewing each other up last week. But anywho, they gonna stand and stick together or don't open their mouth at all. Y'all may hate the messenger, but y'all know what I'm saying is true. His daughters are in school, and I have a daughter, and I don't wish that pain on nobody because kids are cruel in school sometimes. Let's start to do, I guess you wanted to say, start to do better. No, you start to do better. You do better. Okay? And stop making yourself look like a fucking fool down here on the internet and coming down crying about your daughter and how you need help with your daughter and she's going through this, going through that, only for the baby daddy to come out and say that it, whatever you was talking about, you was overhyping the situation, girl. And people still waiting on the update on your child. Girl, you have other things to focus on. Why you over here trying to dip and do it over here in Diddy business? And then while y'all talking about children, he didn't give a fuck enough about his kids. Somebody going to put in the comments, Thomas, some leave Diddy's kids alone. I said, bitch, that's exactly what he did. He literally left them alone as he went somewhere else, and they still wondering where the hell this man is at. Hello? That's exactly what he did. He left them alone. Ain't nobody bothering them kids. He should have thought about them kids before he was out here doing his thizzle, thinking he was too powerful. Okay? Girl, the chickens is coming home. But any who... Um, let's keep going because Bobby Lights decides that he was going to go off on Akbar after she came at him saying, uh, 
people are tired of your SHI. He says, hold up, Akbar BIT. You been wanted smoke, I can tell. Same way I always got something to say is the same you do, except the people, except the people actually are tired of your shit. You are delusional as fuck. You a jealous, bitter ass woman who need therapy. Remember, you started with me. Uh uh-uh, uh, let me go back. Let's see. Let me go back now. Let me go back. Yes, let me go back. Okay. So um, these people over here arguing. So she says, I got a lot of gay friends who will serve um, his ass up. I know such and such will beef the, will, will oh, beat the fuck out of Bobby Lights. Bobby, no lights is what she says. Bobby says, and I got um, a bunch of girlfriends who's in ATL right now <laughs> that will mop her pear shaped body. <laughs> um, Bobby, baby, what's going on? He says, what's T? He says, and you cannot rap. Oh my God, you effing suck yikes okay so then um it looks like they got in the comments he says child akbar says i'm tired of you when i see you it's up you talk so much so much uh hillbilly what punk hard what the hell is she saying did she call him a punk hard punk okay so he said excuse me you better do your research babe keep it cute and stay safe she says i can't stand that hard face punk bobby he always got something to say all right, a bitch, as is what she says. All right. Um, okay, so this is when they were arguing. I'm sorry. This is when they were arguing over, I guess, the whole Megan Thee Stallion situation. And this is him going off on her saying, hold up, Akbar. You've been wanting smoke. I can tell. Same way I always got something to say. It's the same SHI you do. Except the people actually are tired of your shit. You are delusional as fuck. You a jealous, bitter ass woman who need therapy. Remember, you started with me. Then you threatening me. Why? Because you don't like the comments I make on social media. I don't know you. I don't fuck with you. So. <laughs> so why today you want to poke the rainbow? Bear? <laughs> don't make me post receipts of you being on my ass years ago when you needed another one of your pages back man move around and find your next target because i'm not the motherfucking one you twisted toe turd not trying to call this lady a twisted toe turd i cannot i cannot but i do feel like she deserved that read I really do feel like she deserved that read. And we did not need to hear from her when it came down to this situation. She don't even read the room when it comes to her own conflicts and controversy that she be in. But she's over here trying to tell people to have grace for Diddy kids. He need to have grace first. Period. And poor little baby love that he just had. Because she about ain't even going to get a chance to meet her dad. Well, she done met the daddy. But she probably ain't going to be able to spend time with him like the other kids. Um have been able to spend time with him throughout the years i do feel bad for the children as far as the you know kim's kids because they've lost their mom and if diddy were to go away you know serve any time they gonna be without a dad too so i definitely um i i do hate that for the kids but girl he need to think about his kids first okay period why he out here violating other four kids but anyway allegedly honey let's get into this um I'm not trying to read all of this, y'all. Whew, I'm really not trying to read all of this. But make sure that you guys are coming in. You're liking up the video. We have over 800 people in the chat. So hopefully we can get at least like 400 likes or something. God, oh, girl. Not y'all over here being real comfortable, kicking off your shoes, relaxing your feet. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't even going to tap the button. But anywho, uh, let's see. I want to actually scroll down. Because I'm going to be skipping over this, y'all, because I really don't want to read all of this. But there, this is where they have Cuba Gooding Jr. They're saying the defendant, Cuba Gooding Jr., was a relevant actor who has fallen from grace due to several S.A. lawsuits and a recent guilty plea for S.A. Mm. Not trying to put this man whole address up here, honey. Christina Corum. I believe that she might be a person that's going to turn around and flip and be on some uh, what Ethiopia was on, on some, uh-uh, don't come get me. What what do y'all need to know? But they said that this lady here, girl, this is the mystic part. They had tried to say that this lady was the one that had reached out to Miami and was like, girl, we need you to go ahead and bring that little pink stuff on down here. Okay? So I'm just going to be skimming this article and see. I feel like Motown wasn't on there at first. I don't think they were on the... um. Well, they were on the lawsuit, but I don't think I saw this 
on the last lawsuit. Universal, okay, let's keep going. I remember seeing all of this. Um, yeah, this is when he talked about being a uh, Rodney Jones, this, uh, talked about being like a child prodigy and all of this stuff. Um, this is him speaking on some events that took place um, from September 2022 to 2023 and the work that he did with um, P. Diddy for uh, the Love album. So he talks about that here, you know, pretty much confirming that he's been in interaction with him. This is where he also um, admits to witnessing different type of drug usage that took place. Um, you know, as far as ecstasy, the coke, marijuana, he says, ketamine, mushrooms, all kind of stuff. He said he also saw some illegal firearms and stuff. All right. Um, Christina Corum, if that's her name, also known as KK, I guess they're going to be referring to her as KK throughout this lawsuit. She's the chief of staff. Okay. She was the one he's saying retrieved the drugs so she can provide them to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Now he got Christian Combs. Girl, no, he never did. Now see y'all, I, I didn't, I don't think I saw this the first time. Okay. So we might have to really get into some uh, more more than what I want to when it comes to this. Christian Combs, he has down for drugging and S.A. and a woman. Mr. Combs detailing how he plans to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes. I remember seeing that. And, you know, to change his image when it comes to the Cassie um, lawsuit. Young Miami's cousin. I remember that. Um, S.A.ing him. Cuba Gooding Jr. I remember that. Um, S.A.ing and harassing him. All right. He labels a rapper that people are. I believe they tried to say um, the rapper and the R&B singer. I believe they were trying to say it was Meek Mill. Don't quote me. But I believe the R&B singer was Chris Brown, where they say we're consorting. Basically, consorting is like, from my understanding, is just being in an environment with underage girls and S workers. Now, whether they knew that for sure, IDK, but consorting is like being around. Not that they necessarily committed a crime, but they was in the, you know, area okay um what else okay i believe this is about the um the the pop pop that took place at one of the studios where they're saying that diddy and his son um justin went into the bathroom to i guess they were having an argument or whatever the case was um somebody says swallowed i cannot um they were having an argument in the bathroom that led to a, a young man being popped all right. And he had video. Uh, I'm sorry, not video, but pictures of that incident. Um, it was reported, but it didn't make like a big headline because they tried to change the story up and make it seem like it was a drive by or something that took place outside of the actual studio. And the crazy thing to me is this young man. I'm like, is it bad for me to question if if Lil Rod was a um, what do they call it? Was you already a plant by the feds? Because it's the amount of evidence that you have collected. I'm talking about good juicy. Uh, I mean, I feel like you don't gave us more evidence than Cassie. Cassie really gave us most of her word, and I believed her. You know what I'm saying? I think she has some evidence, but I think her evidence was more so I have it if you need it. Like if we go to court and y'all want me to, I could prove it, but I'm not going to put it in the, you know, the first thing. I think that's what it was. I'm not going to put it in these documents, but she had it. So she need to share it. But with this man, you have really been collecting some stuff like you. Your whole plan was to expose this operation. So it's like it makes me question how long, in my opinion, y'all like. Are you a plant, informant, whatever? And how long had they been investigating this man? Is what I feel like. They've been on his head for a long time. Okay? Because this boy got so much evidence. It was like he was collecting evidence for Mad Day. Like, as soon as you piss me off, as soon as some shit go left, I'm going to expose you. All right? But um, I'm like, I, he wasn't doing this for no reason. Okay? So... Mm -hmm. but let's keep going uh let's see yeah so he talks about that he also has the um this is where it was reported you know about the man being popped and they said that it was outside the studio but it actually happened inside the studio um these are some pictures and things of you know what he was able to capture ain't nobody catch him doing none of this this boy and then he got access to actual camera footage like how sway 
baby, this boy been working with somebody the whole time. He been, they been on your ass, sir. All right. Um, this is a photo of Mr. Combs. It was taken at that particular recording studio. And this was hours before the guy G ended up being popped. OK. Um, what else are they saying here? All right. So he says on or about February 28, 2024, uh, Chalice sent him an Instagram message, which alleges that G was popped a half a block away. So why are y'all sending messages to people trying to convince them that what they saw wasn't what they saw unless you're trying to get them to stick to a particular narrative? So this DM says the shoot. The popping occurred a half a block away from Chalice, and it was a result of a robbery. There are police reports corroborating this. Please wait for the facts to come out before you start contributing to the defamation of our organization. See, when y'all dropped that term defamation, that was y'all way of kind of dry trying to scare somebody. Baby, this boy was not playing with y'all. Upon information and belief, Sean Holly claimed that uh, she had evidence the, the uh, situation, situation took place several blocks away and that G returned to the studio after being popped. OK, girl. Upon information and belief, TMZ reports that their law enforcement sources claim that the story was told to the cops that night, namely that the victim was robbed at gunpoint and popped by unknown assailants outside. Girl, it's the audacity. I do believe this young man's story when it comes to this. It's the audacity that um, y'all would pull somebody into the bathroom and just pop them. Like, you know you got a different type of power if you could just pull somebody in there and just pop and then create a whole story and the police don't even investigate further. Child, that is some... <laughs> what Kanye said, no one man should have all that power. Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going. I want to get past this. Okay. I think this is some new stuff that I have not seen. Um, Mr. Combs and Jacobs, we got into the, okay. Mr. Combs and Justin hid out at the recording studio while the police investigated and were the first to depart after the officers left. Okay. This is proving, um, on that day, September 9th, who all was in the studio and what studio, they were in baby what kind of that's what, like you just don't go around taking i don't know i don't know but this boy was on a mission okay they said after this guy was popped in the torso hip slash leg he was physically incapable of walking therefore the notion that he was popped several blocks away or half a block away was a lie that don't that's not even plausible basically um, if he could barely walk and he's popped in his leg and his torso, how far was he going to get to y'all? And he's, he not lying based on the blood splat well the, the blood that's in the video, the photo, you would have at least saw a trail from where he was popped at to the studio at least. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I don't know who got paid when it came to the cops or something, but obviously it was some lazy work that was being done. Nobody investigated. I, I I kind of I believe this this part of this boy's story. Um, if G could do as much walking as Sean Holly and CRS claim, then uh, Mr. Jones would not have been required to physically pick him up off the restroom floor and walk him through the maze. Mm -mm. Let's see what else they got going on. All right. Let me see. OK, they're saying that there was an, uh, there has been no body camera footage or a 911 call. What is even more disturbing is that there was no there has been no sighting of this young man. Good. What? As of the date of this filing near the LAPD, nor the L.A. Fire Department has released any official reports surrounding this situation. There has been no body camera footage or 911 call recording. What is even more disturbing is that there has been no sighting of G. Good, what is going on? Okay, um, the unfortunate uh, situation of G, the unexplained disappearance of him, the lack of disclosures by the LAPD and LFD. The incoherent nature of Sean Holly and uh, the recording studio 
account of the popping uh, raises more questions than answers points to foul play and an apparent massive cover up. Um, somebody asked what happened with Eric Bellinger. I don't think anything happened with him. He was just at the studio in booth A. Um, just like Ty Dolla Sign and some other people. So I don't know if they were there at the exact time that this incident happened. They could have been on schedule to be there like earlier that day or something. Um, so yeah, but, um, this is interesting. Not L.A. Girl, let us find out. LAPD is over there on payroll or something. The deafening silence from the attendees of the CRS uh, situation stems from understandable fear that the attendees would be uh, sued by Mr. Combs for violating a non-disclosure agreement. Now, let's go back. Let's revisit the Eric Bellinger and, and Ty Dolla Sign or whoever else was in the studio. If they were there, maybe they ain't going to say nothing because... Obviously, there was a non-disclosure, but from what I had thought, they were doing some type of like it was like a group thing that they had going on that I don't believe um, those people were included on. So I think whoever was in the studio with Diddy, like where is see uh, Diddy had Studio G. It was Diddy and Ro Roark. So whoever was with their team in that particular studio is who I think may have signed a non-disclosure not so much as everybody else that's listed on this um list here but that's just my assumption girl okay um what else are they saying girl not mr jones said he did not sign that agreement so how did you get that or how how did you get that around you a copy of the non-disclosure agreement that a witness who uh, has asked to remain anonymous provided the writer is attached. So the non-disclosure was uh, is attached and it was given out, but you didn't sign it. How you get that past you? Baby, y'all gonna have to watch Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is a slick one, honey. Okay, because he finessed this. Didn't sign the NDA, got all the camera footage that took the pictures. You better come on, sir. All right. I feel like Mr. Jones was a woman in his past life. Because you know us ladies know how to get information if we need to get it. Okay? Um, what else? They're saying, yeah, they said that he was um, harassed. Is he actually and assaulted by Diddy is what they're saying. Um, what else? Let me keep going. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, oh, let me go back to KK. This uh, Christina Carum, all right, um, as a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with the advances he got from Diddy. Um, the chief of staff told him, you know, Sean will be Sean. All right. Um, they said that she also downplayed Mr. Combs groping old boys and, and genitals as a friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were just something that he does. That don't. Okay, he could, and he could just do that. Just don't do that with me, period. Okay. Um, despite these assurances on several occasions when Mr. Combs began to undress and walk around his house, Miss mm -hmm, Ma'am would get up and be like, all right, that's my cue. I'm going to go ahead and head out, y'all. Bye, girl. I'll see y'all later, okay? Because she already knew what the hell was going to go down. Girl, this right here is messy. All right, they said that um, Diddy, Attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in, you know, gay X. All right. Um, citing, you know, Stevie J and stuff. And I think there was like an image or whatnot. Um, he talks about being essayed by young Miami's cousin. Um, this is him. Girl, it's him looking directly into the camera right here for me, bitch. I'm a hollering. Girl, Mr. Jones knew he was up to some shit the way he was looking right into the camera. Like, I hope I got a good position right here. Child, I can't. Diddy over there whispering in his ear. You got young Miami and the cousin there. The Jane Doe, honey. Girl, this is wild. Mm -mm. 
this is Trafficking and Victims Protection Act. They're saying, according to Mr. Jones, he was transported from California to New York to Florida to uh, somewhere else in the United States Virgin Islands. According to Mr. Jones, during that time, he was forced uh, to solicit SEX workers and perform SEX acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. Did you do it? He was forced to bring Austin's and SEX workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. So I'm, did you do it? What did y'all get into? So he forced you to bring somebody back. He said that he believed Diddy drugged him and recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two SEX workers and Diddy. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Girl, what kind of stuff did they have y'all on? Booby trap on the river. I forgot what this one was about. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep it going, though. Miss had no desire. I guess these were the ladies that he brought back. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Mr. Jones has personally witnessed um, Diddy and Justin solicit drugs and engage in illicit SEX acts. Now, listen, sorry. Let me tell you something. Not you done sat up here and said that you done witnessed both of them do drugs and engage in certain activity. Now, let me tell you something. I probably would have been like, I don't know. I don't know about this, sir. I don't know how real this is you saying. But the way that Diddy went and dated somebody that uh, Justin dated, I don't know what the hell they got going over there. Then he... um. Didn't he date, was it Lori Harvey? I thought that Justin dated somebody, and then next thing you know, the person was Dane Didi at one point. And then the mama already hauled, hauled off and started going in about how um, he don't be protecting their son. So, child, ain't no telling, honey. Ain't no telling. I'm surprised me saying go off yet um, about this situation with her baby being handcuffed. But let's keep going. What else is going on? Um... July 23rd, there was a listening party at Puffy's home. They're saying Lil Rod was present at this party. They said that the event began at 7. Diddy got him some ACX workers, required old boy to find them, bring them back an hour later. They appeared. All right, Lil Rod, um, I guess he came back with at least five women. Hold on, no, no, no. So according to Mr. To Lil Rod, in addition to the SEX workers, there were at least five women in the crowd who were under a under the age of 16. Well, if they was under the age of 16, then they, they weren't no damn women. Okay? According to uh Lil Rod, did he force them to drink some lace de leon? This is crazy here. The presence of these underage uh girls. Why is y'all saying women? Made him very uncomfortable. He attempted to leave, but did he made him stay? He went so far as to take the man keys from him to prevent him from leaving the house, child. Ooh, next thing you know, the boy started drinking the stuff, the lace stuff. He got lightheaded, passed out, woke up by 4 a.m. It was an SEX worker laying right next to him. So he don't know what the hell done happened. Then says Diddy attempted to pass him off to Cuba Gooding Jr. Now, see, some of this stuff, I don't know. <laughs> this is some why I don't know. I don't know what that, this right here, though, what is this? Now, Cuba is giving drunk. You are definitely giving, invading somebody else's privacy heavily. This face is giving serious. This young man's face is giving laughing because I'm uncomfortable and I'm nervous. I want to tell you to get the dog off me. You know, he just, it's that, it's that weird laugh that you may give, but you don't feel comfortable at all. Like, you're out of line, sir. Out of line. It's the clear shot, though, for me. <laughs> it 
ain't funny, but it's the fact that his footage is superb. His photos, superb. They're clear. You can see what's going on. That boy was over there working. You hear me? He was getting this evidence, baby. Um, what else is this? Okay, I think these are the 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 tracks that he did for Diddy that I don't really um care too much about. Um, Diddy used his power and influence to threaten and intimidate this young man. Um, Diddy does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on this man if he did not comply with his demands. All right. Diddy threatened to eat this man's face, according to him. Ooh, child. While standing in Diddy's bedroom, uh, the guy was forced to watch as Diddy displayed his guns drag and, and bragged about getting away with popping people. Mm -mm. Now, according to Lorraine, Diddy shared that he was responsible for the popping in the nightclub with the rapper. Ah, girl. Diddy's former bodyguard accuses the rapper of snitching on Sean over 1999 situation, okay? Mm -mm. According to Mr. Jones, he shared that the artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo, carried the firearm into the club with for him and passed him the item after he got into an altercation with another individual. Ooh, child. Now, according to the civil complaint filed by Miss Cassie during this decade long relationship, Diddy demanded that uh, Cassie uh, also carry one of them items in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he was. Now, according to Lil Rod, as was the case with Jennifer Lopez and Cassie, all right? And Jennifer Lopez had to get the hell away from this man. Diddy required Brandon Paul and um, Lil Rod to carry an item on their person whenever they went out. One of these occasions, um, Diddy was, uh, no, I'm sorry, Lil Rod was required to carry Diddy's firearm. All right. Um, and that was when Diddy recorded himself coaching this guy how to solicit for ACX workers. Like, what the hell is going on? Solicit for. Oh, girl, we're going to have to get through this, honey, because this is just too damn long. Girl, J-Lo don't even look the same. <laughs> girl. All right. Let me skip down. Let me skip down. Who is this man? Fahim Muhammad. Diddy instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if the police in Miami or California ever pull up. So did they contact him when the Homeland Security was on their way? Or did they contact him after they got the handcuffs off? Which one was it? Upon information and belief, Muhammad spoke with LAPD after G got popped. Mm-mm. So basically, y'all in um y'all putting him in the mess too. He must was over there hiding some things. Mm -mm. Let's keep going. Um, let's see. Defendant Lucien Charles in his capacity as CEO, UMG, General Business. Okay. I don't really care about all of that. All right. Okay, lighting system, Ciroc, defendant Christina Coram is the Galeen, Maxwell, Tashawn Combs, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Not they don't relate it, Miss KK, to Miss Galeen, baby. Now, they're saying, according to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed that Diddy displayed and distributed guns from his bedroom closet in Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, California, to questionable individuals dressed in all black. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with him, he witnessed defendant Miss KK openly order her assistance to keep Diddy high off gummies. And pills. <laughs> the defendant KK required all employees from the butler to the chef to the housekeepers to walk around with a black Prada pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, 
and more. Oh, my. Did they find any of those items when they did the Homeland Security search is what I'm wondering. Since everybody had to walk around with a black pouch or fanny pack. Ooh. According to Mr. Jones, okay, a defendant KK wanted Diddy's a drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. According to Mr. Jones, defendant KK ordered SEX workers for Mr. Combs. On one occasion, she sent Mr. Jones a text message requesting that he call a particular SEX worker. And we have that message is what they say. We believe you. <laughs> we believe that you have the message, baby. You got so many other photos. When the hell did you get time to even get these photos, my love? When did you get these images here? Okay? Because he's been ready. Um, he goes on to say, according to Mr. Jones, defendant KK ordered and distributed the ecstasy, all the drugs, okay? All the ones we talked about, she done distributed it, okay? To Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes in L.A. and Miami. Now, according to Mr. Jones on multiple occasions, Ms. KK forced him to carry Mr. Diddy's drug pouch against his will. The pouches were always black and several Mr. Combs staff carried black product pouches. Let me tell y'all, I believe that. I'm sorry. I do believe it. Because if something were to go down, they're going to catch it on you, not me. You're going to be the one holding the items, not me. I feel like that ain't too different than when the um, situation popped off with Jennifer Lopez and the club and Sean. Didn't they take it and put it under somebody else's seat? I don't think it was under his seat. Wasn't it under someone else's seat? It's all like, yes, I believe it. Um, let's see. According to Mr. Jones, KK also sent uh, Mr. Jones to solicit SEX workers for him. And when the SEX workers arrived at his residence, defendant KK would negotiate their price and would take them aside and pay them. Baby, this is a screenshot of a video. How did you get this, baby? He must have truly underestimated you. Truly, truly, truly underestimated you. Thought you was just some dumb person. Like, he had to. Because the way you was moving through this organization, baby, getting all this, this tea. Whew, or I, I can't even say tea evidence. Because <laughs> it is being used against them. Like, wow. Collecting everything. Sean Combs, a butler, Frankie with the black Prada pouch. Mentioned above while on the yacht from December 22nd or December 2022 to January 23. Mm -hmm. Nah, they saying Miss KK was instrumental in organi organizing and executing the RICO and TVPA enterprises. Ah Stevie J, they got on this list, participated in the freak offs. Justin Combs participated in the freak-offs. Ooh, child. Brandon Paul was a mule. Didn't they just catch this young man? Didn't they just catch him at the um airport? Child. Frankie Santella work alongside Brandon while Brandon acquires and distributes these items. Frankie carries the money and pays for the, ooh. Baby, this is an organization takedown, okay? Wow, wow, wow. Are these hidden cameras? Oh, Lord. According to Mr. Jones, Mr. Uh, Combs funded and used his affiliation with local gangs and gang leaders who would frequent his homes in L.A. and Miami to secure the items and the weapons he obtained and distributed out of his homes. Mm -mm. 
China defendant executed their RICO and TVPA enterprises with threats of violence, threatening to eat the guy's face, displaying and distributing items in, the, in his face, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about clapping people, bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 uh, New York City nightclub popping. Oh, wow. I think the person that got popped at that club, I thought it was a woman, and I think she had spoke out about that. I can't remember what she said, but I know she came out and spoke out about it. This is crazy here. Mm -mm. According to Mr. Jones, Diddy executed his enterprises with threats of non-payment for work completed, fake promises of cash payments of $250,000, producer of the year for the Grammys, and guaranteed access to future projects. So he, I don't know, he must have unest—I don't know, because listen, it's crazy how he sat up there and guaranteed certain things to you. And never follow through. But Miami was over here winning damn awards for a podcast or whatever that she didn't even have that damn long. You know what I'm saying? She was over here getting her accolades. Child. Mm-mm. They said that Diddy is allowed to wreak havoc, honey, while living and traveling with this man. He discovered that he had hidden cameras all in every room of his house. And that's what I was asking. Like, are these hidden cameras? And how did you know where they were? You must have one of them hidden camera scanners on you so you knew where it was. Or you must have got real good with security that they ended up giving you the video and the footage. Because how did you obtain all of this? Because something ain't right. Okay? Again, are you a plant and informant? What's going on? Okay? Because you infiltrated these people real smooth-like. Upon information and belief, these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent as the case of the, the, uh-uh, the homosexual SEX tape that Combs provided to this man claiming that it was EVJ. So those people was in there ending in, smashing and bashing, and you over there recording these people without their knowledge. That is a violation, sir. Okay. Due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Diddy believes that he is above the law and untouchable, I guess, because he would use it against the people, honey. Now, they're saying that Diddy employs Jose Cruz as his IT director. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Diddy who confirmed that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper of all of the recordings. So how did you become besties with Jose Cruz? To get all of this footage and video. How did this happen? Upon information and belief, Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the camera and from social media and the internet due to all of the incriminating acts he has required, he, he has been required to record for Diddy. Woo, Diddy hired private investigator. Um, to seek out, harass, and bribe individuals to uh provide dirt on. Mr. Jones. So on or about March the 2nd of 2024, Lil Rod was informed by a close friend from his church that Diddy's engineer, Matt Testa, provided an individual's phone number to Los Angeles-based uh, private investigator, okay? Mm -mm. These the text messages. Major De De what Major DeVoe, whoever you are, he done put you out here. It's, it's Russell Green. He gave me your number. Are you available to speak with me? Hey, I can chat in a couple of hours if that's cool. Sounds good. I'm in an event from 3 to 5, so I'll be available after 5. I'm on the West Coast. Where are you? I'm in Los Angeles. I can talk to you at 1.30. You available now? Did you just call me? Yes, okay. So they're saying Mr. Green attempted to bribe this anonymous individual with an uncertain amount of money in exchange for her producing text messages or any evidence that this individual could produce to paint Lil Rod in a bad light. Y'all, this has got to be the most comical shit that I have seen all week. Well, not as comical as... uh. Simon locking Porsche ass out the house. <laughs> Simon locking Porsche out the house. Not as, maybe today. Maybe today. Maybe it's the funniest thing I've seen today. 
And I say that because of this. Not this young man. Please hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear ye. Okay. This young man was able to infiltrate y'all business organization. Get all y'all motherfucking tea. Nobody knows he's collecting data on y'all for years. <laughs> and you mean to tell me y'all get one, one, one private investigator to collect tea on this man and y'all already out it right out the gate in the beginning? <laughs> what the fuck? Not this young man being a better private investigator than the man you done sat up here and hired to try and make him look bad. That's wild to me. This, and it's comical that you let this boy come through and finesse y'all like this. <laughs> what? I am shooketh. All right. Now, during a call with Lil Rod, this individual expressed fear for their safety and the safety of their family. This is a clear example of some of the tactics implemented by Diddy and the members of the Combs Rico and TVPA Enterprise. All right. Besides contacting the individual previously mentioned, they're saying that the uh, PI contacted Mr. Jones' eight-year-old daughter. You mean to tell me that y'all don't know nobody affiliated or connected to this man that you had to reach out to his child? A eight-year-old? I'm beginning to see why he going down. This is crazy. He solicited information from this child about her father until she cried um, in fear and handed the phone to her mother. At that time, her mother hung up the phone. The PI proceeded to text her. She informed him that she did not want to be bothered, and he continued to send her unwanted harassing text messages. You about to be done, too, for harassment, Mr. PI. Diddy about to get you tied the hell up. Baby, this boy done came in and finished y'all whole shit. Okay, first cause of action, conduct, and participate in a RICO enterprise through a pattern of racketeering, activity violation of racketeer influence, and co uh, corporate, uh, I'm sorry, corrupt uh, organization act. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if uh, set forth. Um, okay. Hmm, let me see. Let's see. Okay, the defendant. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Access to financial resources in the form of wires, direct payments. Okay. Financial support provided by the collective. What's the lifeline? Okay, the spearheaded and maintained the defendants. Okay, let's keep going. Let me see if there's anything else that I care to get into. Defendants are individuals, okay. Girl, this right here, this boy. Defendants have unlawfully increased their profits by luring and deceiving producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists such as plaintiff to their organization for the misstated purpose of using their talents as creatives to produce music. <coughs> Defendants' true intentions are later revealed through a calculated grooming scheme that involves false promises of business opportunities, exposure to music executives with the promise of future introductions, and the promise of awards and accolades. The only person that I have seen really get they just do lately was Miami. This is crazy. So basically... I mean, I, I believe this, too. Like, basically, he's just saying, like, they be finessing people, making it seem like, oh, we're going to work together. We're going to do this and that. You're going to win so many awards. Like, you know, I'm plugged in. I got you. Let's do this. You're talented. Let's work. Whatever, whatever. Only to bring them in and to use them for other purposes. You know, some of it is for music. And then they never get paid. And then turn around and use them for other, <clears throat> you know, personal gain of some sort um, against their will. Is pretty much what he's talking about. Um, within a few months of working for and living, I think I think we got into that. He witnessed um, KK instruct her direct reports. 
um, and Combs Enterprise employees to acquire and transport the following. Yeah, so we know about that. Like, yeah, she transported drugs and all of this stuff. She had other people do it, too. So, yeah, they got into that. He thought he was going to get like $20,000 or whatever from Diddy for some music, I think. Or maybe that's all he got. Oh, he was supposed to get 20000 per song, and he never got 20000 per song. So, basically, he just got finessed. Now, um, let me keep scanning because I believe there was a portion in here about Young Miami. Um, huh? It was public knowledge that uh, Diddy had a serious reputation for violence and engaging in criminal activity. Um, they're saying that uh, Universal Music Group had firsthand knowledge of Diddy's uh, actions, okay, because of the incident that took place in 1999. Um, they're saying Diddy was arrested and charged with two felonies, a second-degree assault and criminal mischief after he, after he beat Steve Stout, who says Diddy and two bodyguards beat him with their fist, telephone, champagne bottle, and a chair. Diddy had criminal a uh, criminal trial surrounding the 1999 nightclub uh, situation, and Diddy required his then girlfriend to transport an illegal firearm into the location. So they're just pretty much running down some of the stuff that we've already went over <clears throat> when it comes to Diddy and his history. Um. Let's keep going. All right, what is this? As part of the scheme, defendants required their artists, creatives, musicians to use the name and reputation of Diddy to solicit these prostitutes or whatever. Okay, so this is Mr. Jones and uh, Brendan wearing the bad boy hat. All right, I believe Brendan, they said, was the handler or something like that. Girl, this right here is crazy. Let me see. Let me see if I can do a search on something. Because I'm really just trying to see about Young Miami. <clears throat> Young Miami's cousin and or assistant is aing him. Um, I think we talked about that. Was there anything else? Because people were also saying, oh, wow, yes. Did I miss this part? All right, so they're saying that according to uh, Lil Rod, on another occasion in Miami on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Diddy asked Lil Rod and someone, somebody else to enter the studio bathroom. According to um, Lil Rod, he asked for a $100 bill because he wanted them to do coke on it, okay, or do it with him. Um, Lil Rod said he was scared. He didn't have a $100 bill, so Diddy waited a little later, and he did the coke with Young Miami. I'm just telling y'all what Lil Rod said. Okay, now according to Lil Rod, later that evening, Diddy required Lil Rod to go and find some women from the booby trap. Okay, and that's how the booby trap, booby trap came into play. Now, this is where I asked y'all earlier if y'all felt like Young Miami um, was innocent in anything, okay? If she's a victim, let's go up, okay? They're saying upon information and belief, defendants, um, whoever they are, CEO of UMG, all right? Um, they said provide financial resources to defendants, um, Diddy and Love Records through wire transfers to defendants, Sean Combs and Love Records. Um, accountant provides this information to the, uh, uh, the money or whatever to the accountant. Upon information and belief, Robin who is the accountant, ensured the wiring of, of, of funds, transfer, or cash payments to SEX workers were completed. So this person, according to Lil Rod and his attorneys, made sure that those SEX workers got paid. Now they're saying Miss Defendant KK, through her uh, direct deposits or her direct reports with Frankie and some other individuals, she would negotiate the fees of the SEX, work, SEX workers um, and would ensure that the workers are paid in one of the manners detailed above, right? Now, according to Mr. Jones, Diddy bragged about having several women on a monthly stipend. Now, according to Mr. Jones, the women who received these stipends were Miss Corisha Romika Brownlee, a.k.a. Young Miami, are we surprised? Not necessarily, okay? 
Um, I believe she was getting one. Jade Ramy, aka Jade, don't know who that is. Daphne Joy, I believe they said that this is a uh, Fifty Cent baby mama or something like that. Now, based on information and belief, they received payment via wire transfer from the accountant and said it is unclear if they were provided the appropriate United States federal tax documents for these payments. Not y'all trying to get the IRS on their ass, too. Who try? Or if they in independently declare these payments on their taxes, try. Y'all is... <laughs> Y'all trying to get them tied up in tax court, too. It is unclear if the uh, CEO um, of UMG Motown Records and uh, uh, UMG or whatever requested an audit of Diddy and Love Records financial records to ensure the financial support they provided to the defendants. Um, basically, they... They not sure if they actually looked into the records to see if the money that's supposed to be used for business purposes is actually being used to pay out these ladies. Miss Carisha included. Okay. Let me see where else her name at in this article. Okay. What is this? Uh, Brennan and uh, KK brought drugs. They're saying plaintiff and the Combs Rico Enterprise were rehearsing for uh, something in the in the water festival in Virginia. Plaintiff Jones personally witnessed Mr. Combs do a few lines of conk in his dressing room. They're saying that Diddy wanted to see whoever that is, but Brandon forgot it. Whatever that drug is, okay? So the defendant KK called Young Miami who then brought it on the private jet from Miami. Girl. <sighs> this is this is what they saying, girl. This is what they saying. Packed coke in his uh cocaine in his carry-on luggage in the garage of Defendant Combs house the evening of November 3rd, 2023. I saw a video going around a young Miami city with Justin, uh, Jason Lee, and she was telling him that she was a whore. And he was like, well, what do you mean when you say that? She was like, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm a whore. I'm a whore. And then they had the definition of a whore, which is a prostitute. I said, oh, wow. Oh, wow. She be saying stuff, and y'all be thinking because of the accent is funny. Ooh, she about be dead ass. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Some part of me is not surprised. Some part of me is not surprised if she is doing it and she is bringing it to him. Okay. Um, let's see. This is all about the cousin. Do we want to get into the cousin? Let me go back. I guess we could get into the cousin. Mr. Jones um, says that, let's see, Jane Doe, who's the cousin, frightened him and placed him um, an apprehension of harm when she physically and SA'd him on Thanksgiving Day. Um, the cousin forcibly touched and attempted and or threatened to touch uh, him in his intimate areas. Um, what else? They go on to say that the cousin used her mouth and performed oral on him while he was urinating in the bathroom. Y'all folks. Girl, what is the plaintiff fought her off while Diddy and his associates sat outside laughing? The cousin then followed little Rod outside of the restroom and began undressing him in front of Diddy and his associates, straddling him and attempted to have forced intercourse with him. As a result, the cousin's conduct. As a result of her conduct, Lil Rod has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. That girl, mm -mm. The conduct of the cousin described above was willful, wanton, 
and malicious. At all relevant times, the cousin acted with conscious disregard for his rights and his feelings and acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that her conduct was certain to cause injury and or humiliation of him. And she intended to cause fear, physical injury and or pain and suffering to him. OK, so that's what they saying about the cousin. Mm -mm. So that's just the reiteration of what all took place there is there anything else oh child upon information and belief defendants um lucinda grange i guess that's yeah the ceo of umg motown records um and universal music group knew the names of many of diddy's sex trafficking slash freak off participants which included young miami Daphne Joy, Stevie J, and Jade. <laughs> mm -mm. So she was over there participating in them things too, child. I'm just telling y'all what the folks said. Okay? I think that was the last bit for um, Miss Miami. I'm just over here skimming through, trying to see what else they over here talking about. Because I think it's a hundred and some pages. But I also believe this is just like a, a lot of, you know, them regurgitating things that they've already pretty much talked about. So I'm just seeing if there's anything new. I don't know. I mean, if 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 Miami is over there participating in FOs, I wouldn't be surprised if she too had to go out and solicit people as well. Uh, people are trying to label her as a victim. And I mean, I do understand where they're coming from because it is like a lot of people that come across Diddy are like victims. So I understand that. But at the same time, I feel like she was a, a willing participant, just like she was willing to get up there in front of that damn stage, holding up that sign, talking about some damn poppy or whatever the case is. OK, so I don't know. So I feel like she was highly aware of what all was going on and cool with contributing with whatever was happening. You know, I do. I do understand where it may come off like she could be a victim considering the fact that he is more powerful than her. He is a billionaire, whereas she is very far from it, you know. So um, just to be connected to him probably was like a, a major thing for her um so yeah maybe that's what's going on let me refresh this real quick because somebody talking about jt responded oh gosh somebody said jt responded where did she respond did she respond on um on twitter What did she say? Let me see. Did she say anything? I don't. S let me scroll down. Is this it? Let me see. Let me show y'all what I'm looking at. Is this it? This is what she posted a few minutes ago. Mm -mm, nobody knocking my motherfucking teeth out, bitch. I don't even say that. <laughs> it's gonna take for a bitch to knock your teeth out one time. I'm just playing, babe. Mm -mm, nobody knocking my motherfucking teeth out, bitch. I don't even say that. Somebody says, so that's where JT getting the SHI from makes perfect sense. So what are you talking about? JT says, uh, first of all, I was in the halfway house being drug tested every night I went in. I explained this years ago. I never did cocaine and never will. It actually destroyed my family. Y'all get on here making jokes about SHI for, for shits and giggles and don't know people post trauma. Stop playing with me, please. Okay. JT said, leave me out that, that she got going on. Okay, didn't JT tell y'all in that song, it'll never be the same? I'm looking at these bitches sideways. Ain't that what she said? Something like that. 
What JT has said, let me see. Let me what them lyrics says. JT sideways. I ain't friendly. I don't fuck with y'all bitches, okay? Try to take a hoe. Ain't enough of y'all bitches. It'll never be the same mother. The old days, pretty in the face, but my attitude stank. Whole soul and got me looking at them sideways. Maybe that's what she been doing. Looking at Miami sideways and like, I can't deal with that. Eee, she says weird and unfunny. All right. Uh, there's that. How we know somebody else didn't pee for you? She says because they come in the bathroom with you. It'd be a lady. I believe that. But um, there is a way is a going on. JT over there looking at Miami sideways. Girl, we all over there looking at her sideways. Like, what you got going on, bitch? Okay. Girl, Miami, you been real quiet. You was just talking about how good it was going to be, how good your summer was going to be. And then the people had told you you might want to check online and see what's, what it's really giving, ma'am. <laughs> all right, girl, not you trending. It ain't funny. Not you trend, trending. Ooh. Uh-uh. Somebody says, imagine young Miami is your mom and realize she's been an SW this whole thing. I guess they meant to say this whole time. Quote, unquote, pay me for a suck and a slob. Oh, that's what that song, I don't work jobs, bitch, I my job. Is that what it is? Is that what she say? I don't listen to her like that. Young Miami is a millionaire. It's really not. Who you responded to? Because I'm nosy like that. Let's go up to the top. Oh, girl, not DJ Academics and this woman talking about some what this mean. Can you leave her alone? He has been on her head for over a month. Okay. N-I-G-G-A's thought they was dating the whole time. She was just his it. <sighs> the reason why this tweet hurts is because y'all remember when Didi went over there to Carisha, please. And she was trying to go with him real bad. Remember that? We go together. Mm-hmm. Real bad. And you wanted to date this man, but the whole time the people saying you was a SW. Girl, don't go with him real bad no more because he going down, okay? And he might not go down as in lockdown, but it ain't going to be the same for him no more. So do you still want to go with him real bad? Where is he taking you? I don't think you should want to go anymore, all right? Um, somebody says that's not SEX worker. That was her sugar daddy. They had a relationship. A SW gets money and go. <laughs> Young Miami was going on vacation, and he bought her a car, took her shopping. That's more than an S worker thing. You got a point. You do got a point. And somebody said, "Well, what is it that you think pimps do?" <laughs> somebody said he says Young Miami is a millionaire. It's really not. She used him for his money. He used her for SEX, and friendship is more of a friends with benefit thing. She wasn't SEX for money. It wasn't a SEX, a money thing or whatever, because they actually hung out, okay? That's what the person is saying. Somebody said, not going to lie, I always thought Young Miami and Carisha were two different people. <laughs> no, you didn't think they was two different people. Oh, wow. Girl, not that got you over here trending, Miami. You know you be quick to come out and call the people broken stuff. Where you at tonight? Why you ain't come out and call these people broke like you typically do? And tell them to go get some money and stuff by themselves. Where you been? Somebody said, <laughs> somebody said, young Miami and Meek Mill too quiet. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Now, what did Meek Mill do? I think they were alleging that Diddy and Meek Mill had something going on, child, IDK. 
Somebody says, I feel so bad for young Miami. The definition of coming from the trenches, doing whatever you need to do to keep from going back, and Diddy played off her mental by throwing money in her face. Y'all see how y'all are trying to spin this? Like I feel so bad for her. She came from the trenches. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's trying to do what she can and not have to go back to the trenches. And Diddy played on her head. Got in her head by throwing that money in her face, girl. She stayed throwing her money in y'all face, too, because she said y'all was broke, girl. And y'all be worried about the wrong things. Uh, but I'm going to let y'all, you know, everybody ain't going to have the same thought about it. Some people feel like, you know, she was a victim and some people feel like she not. And I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. I am in the middle. Uh, but that's really it, y'all. I ain't really got no more. I ain't got a whole lot more. I'm not surprised at what young, young Miami did. Them folks be partying till about 5 in the morning. How else was they staying alert? Not off no damn beans and beans. Got coke in them anyway. Whoa. Not off no no beans and beans got coke in them anyway. Oh, okay. Well, listen, that's what's going on with these people and their life. You know, it's a very unfortunate situation. But some told me young Miami's name was going to get caught up in this. Okay. Some told me when them when right after Cassie did her lawsuit and some other lawsuits came, I'm like, girl, what's your story? Because something happened, girl. Let me tell you, Miami, you come out playing the victim card holy, if you ask me, girl. I'll be over there acting like, yeah, he had me tied the hell up too, girl. Yes, I'm blaming him for all our pain and suffering. I need my coin. He made me do this. He made me do that. I ain't even want to eat much. Go and grab this stuff and bring it from Miami. I didn't want to do none of that stuff. He made me do it, your honor. Girl, I'll be over there lying my ass off because this ain't a good look for you. You know, I think this is a very bad look. But that's all I got, y'all. I just wanted to come share my thoughts. You guys can continue the conversation down below in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? I am Jamie. That's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie. That's me. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.